Hey, what's going on, guys? It looks like the EU may have shown their hand a little bit about their plans to potentially, this is just potential, right, tinfoil hat, potentially confiscate everybody's assets as part of this, you know, great reset thing that a lot of people are speculating on happening. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that news. But first, I think the best thing that you could probably do in the case that something drastic does happen like that is to try not to be in debt. So I saw this video and I think we have a problem with trying to consume way too much, especially in the United States. So look at what this guy has gotten himself into here. And in my opinion, this is the kind of thing that financially potentially ruins people, right? Who the f has a Ram 2500? It's a diesel truck. Great. It costs $1,275 a month. That's correct. You bring in $3,333. This is a third of your income. A third of your income goes to this truck. I do a lot of driving. Every other country has figured out that you don't need a supersized wagon. Like the truck bed in all these eras. You know how he says there, I do a lot of driving. I know people try to justify their cars as because they do a lot of driving, they want to be comfortable. They want to, it's like almost like a house. It's their office. They live in it. So they want it to be nice. But there is, you can still, I think, do that without needing to have a, to, a brand new sort of top of the line truck. You can make your car comfortable without it being a brand new sort of truck in that position, in my opinion. Throughout even the start of trucks in this country, not only have they stayed the same, they've actually shrunk and the I've cabins have gotten better. I've seen it. You're paying way too much, more than you need. You're trying to justify saying you need this to do it. I no, do. buddy. I c what are you making in this position? 48000 What's Grand the balance office? on this? About sixty-six. dollars well, So the, he makes, uh, and a lot of people, you know, do this. I had a similar story to this where... Uh, when I was working in a cubicle for a period of time, there was someone that sat in the cubicle right next to me, bought a brand new, I think it was a Ford Focus at the time, and this was like five years ago or something like this. And you went and looked at the prices of those, and it's a similar situation where the car costs more than this person makes in salary a year. That doesn't make any sense at all. How could you ever expect to afford a house if you couldn't even pay off a car with your entire salary. And that doesn't even include the taxes and all this kind of thing. That's right. 12.75. Buddy. On a 12.75% interest rate. So he's probably going to pay for that car. I don't know. I didn't go and do the math on it or anything like that. But he's probably going to pay one and a half to two times for that car. It's just a... You just don't want to be in this situation. If you can... Right, I drive a beater. If you're ever like, hey, Kyle, I'm thinking about buying a really nice car. I'm feeling some societal pressure to buy a really nice car. Just holler at me, right? And we can talk about driving a beater and how it's not that bad. You can have paint chipping off of it and no one really looks at you funny. So now let's get into the main topic of this video. I've said on this channel before, if they know you have it, then you really don't own it. And this isn't to necessarily try to run and hide, do anything like that. A lot of items that you own, for example, in order to drive a car on the streets, you have to register your car every single year. Same with a house. The title to the house is going to be in your name unless you own the house in a trust or something like that. So for the most part, a lot of your assets are already registered with the government, right? The only thing that's not is if you have maybe some physical gold, but you you had to have paid cash with that, or you have cash that you're stockpiling, which isn't a good idea because what is it they say in the last four years or so, the dollar has lost 25% of its purchasing power. So that means, and I'm not just picking on any one politician. So from the time in 2020 when we got our new president or 2021, if you had $10,000 in the bank, right, it's worth... 25% less than that now. So it was worth $7,500 now, just four years later. So that's unfortunate. We can't, and this is why I really like crypto, you know, and different types of crypto is because theoretically, 
good crypto projects should absorb some of this inflation that is destroying your dollar. So if you're trying to just save in cash, you really can't at this point. You have to have a minimum amount, maybe for six months living expenses, maybe operating expenses, depending on what you do in life. But almost no more than that do you want just sitting in cash. It's made everything unsafe. So in here, EU, register all your valuables in a central EU register to help with financial transparency, they say. Bank accounts, shares, cars, precious metals, Bitcoin, works of art, your tacky Rolex. Register it all. And they are going to say that the reason for them wanting to do this is for safety. Anti-money laun laundering, crime, all this kind of stuff, which, I mean, you know, on its own isn't necessarily a, a bad thing. You want to stop crime, but why not stop crime when it's committed? I don't I don't know why we have to punish everybody else, the 99.999% of people that are just law-abiding regular citizens. Why do you have to punish them just to catch 0.0001% of criminals? It doesn't it doesn't really make sense. So they did, they said that they were going to create this EU asset register, but then it looks like they walked it back. So he says, please note the article has now been edited to deny that such a register is being planned. But we know how this kind of thing generally happens. Why would you even think to do that anyways? And then what they do is get pushed back, they scale it back a little bit, and they so they reach, then they say, oh no, everyone, and then they pull it back just a little bit. Then they reach, and then they reach, and, then, and this is how eventually, what's that saying? If you give an inch, they'll take a mile sort of thing. It looks like that is maybe what is happening in, in the EU, Australia, I believe. They're really test zones for what's eventually going to come to the United States. I think a lot of this might show up last in the United States simply because we have 2A, right? If you're familiar with the Second Amendment in the United States. But even that, right? They're going to slowly try to ban assault rifles. And then before you know it, you're only allowed to have a uh, an item with that has two potential rounds in it, that kind of thing. Let me shut my Discord off. But make no mistake, it does look like eventually they want all of your assets tokenized on chain and in their custody so they can freeze it in this kind of thing. So Balaji says this, the EU is bankrupt and preparing for asset seizure. It's not just the EU though. I think it's all the Western central banks, right? They're in trouble. It's why they're building this registry. What's coming is not just inflation, but confiscation. And then he goes to share this. And this this is what the balance sheets sort of look like here. So you've got at the top the assets. And this is just all assets that people that people own, right? In the United States. This isn't just government assets, because he as he says here, in the government's eyes, your house, your car, your bank accounts, all of those are really government assets because you live in the United States and you have a social security number. We are just a number. We are just cogs in a wheel, right? Just like you would look at machinery and say, oh, that's a conveyor belt. That's a whatever. That's how we look too. Can a conveyor belt really own anything? Not really because the factory owns it and the factory is the government, right? So the way they look at this this is all the assets, and then you look at the liabilities, and what we usually see is, you know, $37 trillion in debt, right? That's what the government admits. 37 is an underestimate, so they even say it's an underestimate of the debt. Social Security, Medicare, that's another $78.4 trillion that's on the line, and they, they say that in their balance sheets here. And then wait, he says, there is actually more. The total, right? The total sums up to $175.3 trillion in present value terms. And then he goes on to say that that is similar to the about $200 trillion that legendary trader Stanley Druckenmiller has said is the all-in liabilities of the U.S. government. So if you think about this, right, the entire federal government collected $1.8 trillion in taxes, right? That's where they generate their money last year. That number... It is itself juiced by deficit spending, so the government printing money to even create those taxes, you know. The dollar's down 25% since 2020, as we said, and that $177 trillion in asset value plummets if liquidated. So think about it. If you've got Bitcoin and you've got a lot of it and it's worth $100 million, 
if you go to sell some of that Bitcoin, it's gonna, as you're selling it, the market price is going to drop. So really, you don't have $100 million in liquid Bitcoin if you were just to sell that because as you're selling it, the price drops. So that's what he's saying here. This $177 trillion in assets, imagine when all of it hits the market and then China or whatever country wants to try to buy up the United States. Those asset prices, if they need to be sold off, are going to drop in value. So there's not even enough assets in, in, in the United States to cover the potential 177 trillion in debt. In the comments, this person said, last coin standing, make sure to take Lagarde's advice because if there's an escape, that escape will be used. And then they ask the questions, what is that escape? Why do you need it? So I went to try to find that video and I wanna play the clip. I tried to understand the full context of it and this lady asks, in terms of regulation, but listen to the words that she uses. How strict should this regulation be and who should regulate the different parts of it? So data flows, inclu including the important issue of data flows. Well, it's a matter that needs to be agreed at a global level because you know if there is an escape, uh, that escape will be used. So she really did say that regarding Bitcoin regulation. It is a little bit, it's a little bit concerning, I guess you could say, right? Because Bitcoin, she does mention that it's in no way going to be a currency. And I think everyone has kind of agreed on that point, even in the large Bitcoin community. The fees are too high to really transact with it. And if you go to the Lightning Network, it's mostly being taken over by custodians. That that layer two is essentially gonna, gonna become the new bank, right? It's not private or anything like that. So if they know that you own the Bitcoin, sure, you could you know, do whatever you want with your seed phrases, bury them in the yard, send it across state lines and put it in a bank vault or whatever it is that you want to do. But if they know that you have it, they can potentially, potentially come to take it in the case that they go insolvent, they want to do a reset and use collectively everyone under the government sort of purview, right, in the United, in the United States in this example to kind of bail it out. And she's obviously the European Central Bank leader. So what do you think? Is the EU planning some sort of confiscation attempt with this registry? Or is it just a tin foil hat type of theory? Let me know down in the comments.